People are of the opinion that when someone commits an offense, he should be punished to deter him and others from committing further offenses. But we have long moved on. The new shift in thinking is that prisoners should be exposed to interventions which will help them to have skills and traits as they move out of the prisons and avoid re-offending. As a, as a disease, so we try to uh, one accustom the person to the prison, welcome you to the prison, tell you what you should expect in there, and then we try to guide you. It's like a guidance center. So we guide you, and then we counsel you, so that at least you'll be able to cushion whatever you're going to expect in there. Somebody's coming for 30 years, <clears throat> and what do you expect? So we need to let the person go through that. Uh, customized system so that the person when he goes there he can be well prepared for the journey ahead. During counseling sessions, most of them cry. They tell us a lot of things that they could even tell the police. And what we do here is confidential. Whatever I, I discuss with them here becomes confidential. There are a lot of questions on the assessment, this assessment form. There are a whole lot of questions that we ask. So when the person comes, we take our time, ask questions. Nest of kin, well, I mean, a whole history. When we want to go down, the, there are so many questions that we ask through the assessment. After counseling the inmate on what to expect in prison, there is yet another journey meant to prepare them spiritually to face the rigors of their new environment. The aim of the religious affairs unit is to reclaim the criminal. He went to so many criminality, and the whole life is that without committing crime, he cannot live. So what we do, is to take his mind off criminal ideas and bring Christ into him. When Christ comes to sit in him, then he sees the need to do the right thing. And the church activities that we undergo are part of the rehabilitative and reformative activities. We change attitude, we change behavior. We try to see if they can learn pro-social behavior so that when they go out, society will not frown on their behaviors. Society will see them as part of them. And that's doing, they will be part of society. Their re-entry is also good. To some of these inmates, their entry into prison could best be described as a blessing in disguise. I've been here for about five and a half years now. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking forward to next year before Christmas. Yeah. I'll go back home. But I am the coordinator of the UPF. UPF stands for United Prison Fellowship. 
when all the denomination comes together, I am the one who coordinates the church and makes sure that everything, you know, being in order. And uh, being here has helped me a lot spiritually. I'm not saying that it's best to be here, but at least I have deepened in my Christian relationship with the Lord. Outside there, of course, I know God, but it wasn't that good. And I thought I know God very much, but being here have helped me to, you know, fortify my relationship with the Lord very, very well. It has really helped me to grow spiritually. The call to prayer at Zan is a reminder to the Muslim inmate of his obligation to God and his fellow human beings. I'm the Muslim leader over here. I've been here for almost three years now. And inshallah, I'll be leaving in the ending of 2016. And so far, the prison and the Islamic community in a whole has been very, very good in the sense that we have a very big mosque here, as you can see. The inmates, my fellow brothers, at least we observe the two basic prayers, as in the two afternoon prayers. The Zohar and the Asr, we observe them in the mocks here and we come in our numbers. As a person, in as much as I'm the leader of the Muslims here, the Islamic activities that we've been embarking here has helped a lot. We have a normal end of month Quran recitation, hoping that by the end of that recitation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will listen to us and forgive us all our sins, all the harm we've caused outside. You forgive us and see us from this place. I just want to tell my brothers to stay away from crime because each and everybody outside is a candidate of prison. There's no doubt about it. But for us who are privileged, we are caught in one way or the other and we are here. And we are repenting, and by so doing, Allah will see us through. But for them outside, if they don't stop, and they don't repent, and they might not even have the opportunity to come to prison in order to repent, that means they will die outside. And when you die outside, and you don't repent of your sins, there is only one abode for you, which is Jahannam. That means you are going to hell fire, and we don't want any of our brothers to end up there. The prison service currently abounds in a lot of vocational training, formal education, as well as other interventions, which we believe would equip the prisoner adequately for him to go out there and get some livelihood, which will prevent him from further committing crimes. The Senior Correctional Center, SCC, 
was established to reform juvenile inmates and to provide them with the necessary vocations that will make them self-sufficient when they are released. I am 17 years old. I came here because of assault. And when I came here, I learned and I worked hard. When I live here, I was able to do it well. I am 18 years old. I bring the farm at Bosta. I'm learning carpentry work. I came to Bosta here, I know that I will learn something better than I will go to house. After that, I know that the carpentry shop helped me. If I move from Bosta and go to my parents, I know that I will learn something better. What we do here is we train the inmates, the juveniles. When they come, some of them, they don't have any trade at all. So we train them here and when they go out, they have something doing in, in, in their communities. The vision of the prison service in education is to transform images through former education. To ensure that inmates also benefit from formal education and to catch up with their fellow brothers and sisters outside prison, those who wish to be part of the process are given the opportunity. The teachers are inmates with the requisite educational qualifications. Yes, she is not at the door. In the past, Imprisonment has been for punishment, but research all over the world is indicating that education is the tool that will transform the prisoner absolutely and also to stop him from relapsing into the crimes that brought him into the prison. In 2008, the prison service collaborated with Center for National Distance and Opening Schooling to rule out formal education, that is to say JSS, SHS, and NPTI programs into the prison. In 2010, the first batch of 12 inmates sat for the BEC and passed extremely well. They were all selected by the computer selection program into the conventional secondary schools. But for the fact that they were still in incarceration, we had to rule out SHS program for those who pass to, to have a continuous education. Unfortunately, those who have passed to pursue tertiary education wouldn't have the opportunity to do that because they are still in prison. Uh, for that matter, the prison service is, is in collaboration with some of the universities in Ghana and Center for National Distance Learning and Open Schooling to rule out distance education for them to achieve their dreams of getting tertiary education. The service would have wished that those who have passed to pursue these programs would have given the opportunity to go out to do that. But unfortunately, the laws do not permit that. And for that matter, uh, it, it has become very necessary to collaborate with other tertiary institutions for them to pursue such programs in the prison. I would like to appeal to all stakeholders out there who are interested in education to come to the aid of the prison service to help our unfortunate brothers and sisters in the prison to have formal education. That the service has the potential to become the agricultural giant of the nation is undisputable with large tracts of land, labor, and officers with the required expertise in agriculture at the disposal of the service, the prison service with the needed push could become the citadel of the country's agriculture. Agric is one of the tools by which we correct inmates that come into the prisons. Agric programs are designed in such a way that we use it to train the inmates to equip them with skills in modern agriculture so that when they get discharged from prison, they can use their experience and their skills gained to live meaningful life. They can work with it, can give them employable skills by which they can be employed, and they can use it for themselves to maybe uh, do their own farms. We train them in crops, 
crop production as well as animal production. We have animals like grass cutters, we have rabbits, we have poultry, we have sheep, we have goat, we have cattle. We train them in all these things. I have been here for two years and I have learned a lot about how to rear the pigs. I have learned that if you get pigs, I know how to how they go come hit and how you give them to the, uh, the boa to cross it. So I have learned a lot about how to rear pigs. My message for my brothers and sisters out there that they should stay out from bad things and they should learn how to control their temper. If anybody do them bad things, they should forget so that if they follow their heart, they will come and end up at the place where I am. Our production levels have remained low simply because we have been more into hoes and cutlass kind of agriculture. We need machinery, we need tractors, we need combined harvesters, we need dryers, and we need warehouses where we can store large produce from the farms. We would like to appeal to civil society organizations, we would like to appeal to development partners, the government, NGOs, philanthropists to come to our aid to help us increase production so that we can generate enough revenue and even use some to assist discharge inmates to resettle them smoothly into society. Congestion in the country's prisons is a major challenge confronting the Ghana Prisons Service. Though others believe a prison should not project the comfort of a typical home, the service with this new shift in thinking thinks otherwise. We are addressing this issue through a series of interventions to help decongest the prisons in this country. Recently, the government has provided us a new base and some of us, we don't have mattresses on the bed. So we are pleading for the public institutions to come and help us and provide some to us. The first and most important, I would say, is the Justice for All program. There have been complaints that people are there, they are not being brought to court, so there should be a solution, there should be a way out for that. So based on that, the Honorable Lady Chief Justice got a number of judges together. So we go to the prisons and uh, we sit there, try the cases. Those that who have been in prison, maybe uh, on remand, their remand warrants have expired, have been there for about five years, ten years. So there and then you sit on the look at the facts and the issues involved and you either discharge the person because if the person has been sent there for an offence that is not more than two years as a sentence and the person is there for about uh, three years automatically, he or she might have served the sentence so you have to just uh, release a person from the prisons. There were those also who were facing uh, charges of murder and robbery. So we looked at them also. Where we need to grant them bail, we grant them bail, but on conditions that uh, they will definitely report to the court. So that is basically how it started and what we've been able to do. A lot of people need the services of lawyers uh, but they cannot afford to pay the fees of lawyers. So the Legal Aid Board was doing that, even though uh, we never had a lot of lawyers to, to, to handle the program. And it needs a commitment, because you look at the, uh, the scheme, the Legal Aid Scheme, um, it's not much, it's not also well funded, and it's not resource. So when cases are even referred to lawyers to take the cases up of uh, these unfortunate brothers and sisters in the prisons, or those even who apply for their services. There is this uh, not a great commitment to, to, to uh, doing the cases for these persons. One day at a sitting, you can be presented with about 20 cases, and uh, sometimes 30 cases, applications at the prisons, which you have to complete before the next program uh, uh, rules. There were some that, uh, uh, the cases that came, we were not able to complete them within that section, that session. 
and the Honorable Lady Chief Justice uh, ask those judges uh, to continue even during the vacation by giving a special dispensation. <laughs> The Justice for All program. It's a very good initiative which I hope will continue and even spread further to other prisons other than Kumasi and Accra with the hope that many more prisoners will benefit from this laudable project. <laughs> The Ankafo Maximum Security Prison was built purposely to decongest the country's prisons. Actually, it is a maximum security prison which takes care of high-level security risk prisoners in the country. It is a 2,000-bed capacity which can hold many more prisoners from other central prisons. This prison distinguishes itself from the other prison because of its security nature. Looking at the caliber of people who are here, the least sentence is 20. The highest sentence is 169. Therefore, security-wise, the place should be well fortified. I mean, giving somebody 169 years, you don't expect him to be sober. They may pretend to be sober on the face, but within and therefore security is more paramount here. The fact that they are high profile prisoners, you have to ensure that boredom is reduced. Therefore, you allow them to come and exercise. So, but because they are high profile prisoners, you can see the security, I mean, uh, wall and all these things. You move them in, then we lock the main gate. So once they are playing, they are under lock so but nobody can take advantage and uh, escape. This is our clinic. The clinic is here to take care of the health needs of the inmates. Looking at their sentences, it will not be prudent to send them to the government hospital. So we have resident doctors, nurses, they take care of them. So when the situation gets critical, then a referral can be made to the government Hospital. If you don't have adequate housing for staff who will be sent to that prison to work, and we are working feverishly around the clock to get private estate developers to come in and help us find a solution to this problem by trading off some of our land for housing. I want to look once again at the housing needs of my staff and look around our barracks will reveal how depressing the housing situation is. Prison officers live in a room which can best be described as a cubicle. They live there with their dependents, their house helps, and it is actually an eyesore. We are looking at the opportunity where we can get better housing for our staff to motivate them to help us achieve the laudable goals that uh, we have set for ourselves. And we are also calling on the government to come in and help us to get more housing units. As the service undertakes the necessary reforms to rehabilitate prisoners and to demystify the negative perception associated with prisons, it is hoped that the public world comes with open arms their brothers and sisters who may now have a different story to tell. I am pleading with the whole society that they should open their arms wide to embrace us, receive us, because when we come and they receive us, definitely they will see the good things in us because there are a lot of good things which has happened to us here. The Harun or the Isa or whoever they know back in those days who has been here, by the will of Allah, he has changed. 
is now a better person. One request we make to all members of society out there is to accept the president back. We go through hell to change the prisoner in here. And most of them have actually genuinely repented. They've come out of their criminal activities. They've come out of their criminal attitudes and behavior. And they are going out as if they've done nothing innocent. What society has to do is to accept them back. And when that is done, they will not go back to their former way of life. On many occasions, when somebody is uh, sent on remand, the family members forget about the person. The person more or less is branded as a social misfit. But that is not the issue. You need to visit them, and they will be able to even tell you the problems they are going through. It is no fault of theirs that they went there. There could be a lot of factors that might have sent them there. It could not necessarily be that they committed the offense. It could be that um, they didn't know how to talk in court or to get uh, a lawyer to handle the matter for them or maybe um, how they went through with respect to the police investigations that might have landed them there when they go on remand. So if they visit them in their presence, in their cells, they will be able to tell them and then they can also come to the uh, legal aid board and the legal aid board will take up their matter. The prison service is putting into place a lot of reforms to make the prisons a better place for prisoners to stay. We are making sure that they come out as useful and productive citizens to better the lot of society and even to improve themselves as persons. But we would like to sound a note of caution to the social deviants and the miscreants who are working our streets, who refuse to change. And to people who may think the prisons are beds of roses, the administration is going to ensure that prisoners who would want to always cause trouble are taken care of and that public safety is number one on our goal.